Hey traders, Marcello here, founder of the Day Trading Academy, co-founder of Speed Up Trader, where you guys can come and pay just 120 bucks to apply to trade with Our Money Live. Today we're talking about why your trading strategy doesn't work. So it's important to realize that there's a few things that you have to use for your trading strategy. If, if you guys are trading and you're not consistent, there's probably a reason why. And one of the main reasons is probably because of the trading strategy, okay? If you have, I'm going to give you three or four things. If you have any questions about this, don't forget to leave a hashtag, Ask Marcello on Instagram or here on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're seeing the video. And also, don't forget to subscribe here to the channel since I love to be able to share with you guys my experience so you guys can learn how to do this as well. It's part of the reason, for example, why we started Speed Up Trader because now we're the only academy that is able to have the confidence to actually give you guys our money to trade with, right? So first thing is simplifying the process. I think that mo I, human nature is to kind of think that it needs to be complicated in order for it to work, am I right? So we, we think that trading is looking at those 20 computer screens and all the colors and lines and indicators and, and we gotta just make it just really complicated. It's gotta look really fancy. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I thought the mic broke again. One of the, at the end of the day, the, the situation is that you have to really make sure that you simplify the process because they, they actually did a study at Harvard, one of the best universities in the world. It's either one or two every year. And a, a young lady with a doctorate, I forgot her name. If you guys want to go and look it up, she had a PhD, did a study for over 50 years, and she proved that we literally are not created to multitask. So whenever you multitask, do two things at once, your effectiveness is going to go down 40%. 40%. So imagine you're trading stocks or Forex. You have to look at two or three, four different stocks at the same time. And then on top of that, you have to use two, three, four different indicators. And then on top of that, you got to calculate the percentage of risk that you're going to have on your trade. And then you see what I'm saying? See where I'm going with this? So without simplifying the process, this in my opinion, in my humble opinion, is part of the reason why most traders fail, especially in the beginning, because we complicate the process. We think it needs to be fancy. Right, And because we think it needs to be fancy, what happens is we complicate the process. And because we complicate the process, we don't learn quickly. Simple as that. So first, is, first thing is you have to simplify the process. You don't need indicators. All the indicators are lagging, which basically means they calculate the information in the past. A lot of you guys trade with candlestick charts. Not to say you can't make money with candlestick charts. There's a lot of traders out there that do that. But if you trade with something like tick charts and you trade in, in more, let's say, uh, less manipulated and more regulated markets like stocks or futures, you're able to see more information and simplify the process so you don't even need to look at 20 different charts, like a one minute chart, a 10 minute chart, a 30 minute chart, all that stuff. And um, less is definitely more because then what it's going to allow you to do, it's going to allow you to focus on the things that are more important like your emotions, your psychological state, right? Your, your fear of, of losing money and why you didn't get into that trade. And then you lost two trades in a row and then you take one trade and you try to hold it for more than you should because you want to get greedy because you want to have a positive day. That's the stuff we really need to focus on, not looking at 20 indicators and 20 charts and 20 different markets, okay? Other than that... The most important thing after that I would say is the risk versus reward ratio. I should probably say reward to risk ratio backwards, which it, mean, it needs to be minimum two to one. Basically means if you're gonna take a trade, most, most traders what they do is they talk about what percentage of risk, what, what should your risk be? So you have, let's say, a $50,000 account or a $100,000 account. They always say the, the standard is about 2 or 3%. You shouldn't risk more than 2 or 3%. So then before you take in, put in your trade, you're going to risk, let's say, $2,000, and then you got to calculate the 2%. See what I mean? Simplifying the process. So the way that we minimize risk is, is literally just with the risk versus reward ratio where you're never going to lose more than you win on a trade, ever. We're gonna automatically risk, let's say, something like 100 bucks. So no matter what trade you take, at what point you take it, at what time of the day you take it, you're never gonna lose more than 100 bucks. Flat, never more than 100 bucks. Well, that means if you tack on the profit, 
and it's minimum, minimum two to one, well, if the system or the strategy is developed to always win two to one, you're always gonna make, let's say, $200 for every 100 that you're gonna lose. That basically entails that you can literally lose more than you win. You can have, you can win 40% of the time or you can lose 60% of the time because it's super ignorant for us to believe that you're just gonna start trading, you're gonna buy some course on the weekend and you're gonna start making a million dollars tomorrow. That's what everybody thinks and that's not the way it works. If it was that easy, everybody would have their yacht in Ibiza you know, because they're multi-millionaire traders. It doesn't work that way. So we have to put ourselves in the best circumstance to win because we know it's a lot easier to lose than to win. So if we have a, a, a window a risk versus reward ratio, a reward to risk ratio where it's two to one minimum always, if you're gonna lose always 50 bucks, you're gonna win a minimum of always 100 bucks, you're always gonna put yourself in, in the best situation to be able to win, especially in the beginning where we're gonna make mistakes, right? You're, you're gonna, you're, I mean, come on, let, let's, 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 let's do this charade that they do online, right? You're gonna buy my strategy, you're gonna do very, and then tomorrow you're gonna be making a million dollars. No, that's not the way it works. So it's important to realize that in the beginning, we are going to lose money, we're going to make mistakes. So we have to put ourselves in the best situation to be able to make those mistakes, okay? Other than that, Another big thing is that you don't control risk. So not, not to be confused with the reward to risk ratio, but you don't control risk, meaning your risk is always variable. So when you're gonna put in a trade, ah, sometimes you're gonna lose 500, sometimes you're gonna lose 20, I ah, kinda don't know, that's a problem. Because in this business, it's a lot easier to lose money than it is to make it. So if you don't know what your risk is gonna be, then you don't know what your reward needs to be in order to cover that. You see, you see where the problem lies here? So a lot of strategies or systems that you're gonna use are not allowing you to be successful because you can't control the risk. And this business, especially in the beginning, I've been, I've been in this industry for almost 18 years now, learning and teaching and, and trying to give people my money to trade, all that. And it's, it's a situation where if, if you're gonna lose more in the beginning, it's just the way it is, but if you don't have the odds in your favor, then you're just never gonna win, period, right? So it's important to actually realize that. The next thing is you trade in the wrong markets. So uh, I mentioned this in another video. Stock markets weren't created for speculation. They were created to be able to invest in companies. Stocks, for example, which is something I do recommend, is you go in, you invest in a company, the company's doing great, they give you a dividend, they go up in value, and then you make money. Forex, for example, was created to be able to exchange one currency to another but futures was actually developed for speculation. Sorry, so it's literally made for day trading. So we need to understand that in certain markets, in my humble opinion, are not as good as other markets. For example, Forex doesn't have a centralized exchange like stocks and futures, which means that there's a lot more manipulation in these markets. They did studies, and if I'm not mistaken, in 2017, there was a publication in the UK from, a, if I remember correctly, it was ABC News, 94.5% of traders in Forex are institutional traders, which basically means that you, with your $50 account, are going up against the guy that has a billion dollars or the bank that has trillions of dollars to be able to move markets, but you think you're gonna start making, you're knocking it out of the park. Same thing with stocks. Why do you think there's a minimum of $25,000 to day trade stocks? See what I mean? So you, you have to make sure that you go where it's easier. Like all markets are manipulated in my humble opinion, right? Whatever you wanna call it, I call it manipulation. All markets are, they're gonna have situations where you, you have professional traders and other people you know, kind of pulling the strings but there's ways to mitigate that and there's ways to actually see that, right? With futures, since you have one centralized exchange for the majority of the world, most things, right? Oil now, you can get it in China, but gold, silver, futures exchange, it's all generally in the US. It's a centralized base of information. So if you use something like candle, uh, excuse me, tick charts, you can see all the transactions and you can see the manipulation to be able to create or develop a strategy. I didn't develop tick charts, for example. You guys can go and, and be able to use that in any platforms you want, but you can actually see that information. Last thing I wanted to mention about why your trading strategy doesn't work is that you don't back test it. So you just believe this guy that you met online and you're gonna buy his course, but you're just gonna automatically supposed to work, right? And that, because you don't, 
have the confidence that it works, you're not gonna always make the right decision because you're gonna have that fear of losing money. You're gonna have that fear of maybe, maybe I'm gonna lose today what I make in a month, right? We work really hard for our money. So what I always do with all the students at DTA, and part of the reason why I think I've had so much success with a lot of the guys in DTA, much higher average in the industry, average of success, is I always tell them, look, prove to me that the strategy doesn't work. Go back years, I have nine years of stats, show me that the strategy doesn't work. Somebody goes in, they make these monster Excel spreadsheets thing and you know, this trade, that trade, and when it does this and the And then afterwards, they don't have any fear because they know that the numbers are in their favor. They know that the system, the strategy actually works. And that's something that you guys should do, right? So these are all things you guys need to keep in mind if you have a friend or, or uh, a colleague or you bought a strategy from somebody and you don't know how to control risk or you haven't back tested, do all this stuff and you guys will see. At the end of the day, you guys are gonna have a lot more confidence to be, be able to make money in the markets, okay? Any questions, let me know. You guys have a hashtag Ask Marcello in the comments. Don't forget to follow me on you know, the, the, the social webs and um, don't forget to subscribe here to the channel. We'll see you next time.